Of course I will. Why wouldn't I want to see you writhing in pain while a big burly bearded guy hurts you? She accepted his request lightly with good cheer and left the obvious uh, corollary unsaid because it had actually been a while since she had seen such a thing. She picked him up in Brooklyn and they kissed in the front seat of the car. It was early evening, chilly and damp. Their kiss was brief and functional. Through the open car door came the scent of fireplaces and layers of wet leaves still piled in tiny squares in front of brownstones, trapped in the narrow spaces between the doors. Yellow and flickering blue lights flickered, uh, filtered from barred front windows when he closed the car door, putting them both in comfortable darkness. I'm sorry I didn't call sooner, he said quietly. You're such an asshole, Parker, she said, turning the wheel. I've missed you too. <laughs> the studio was two flights over a pizzeria in Jersey City. The sign on the steel door was faded, and Rachel hit the buzzer several times before they heard the click of the lock releasing. Let's see the patch, the artist and proprietor said in way of greeting. Chris hung up his motorcycle jacket by the door and pulled his shirt up, turning to show the small area just over his waist, a spot of color on his skin. Wolf nodded as he examined it. Bald as an egg, he wore a tapered black and iron gray beard. His skull was etched with a ring of black barbed wire, his earlobes elongated by double aught gauge plugs. Yeah, that looks good, he said. Let's get you under the lights and make sure you're properly crazy. There's no doubt about that, Rachel <laughs> muttered. But she hung her own coat up and followed them over to the table under the spotlights. Ink, needles, wipes, and gloves were all in place, and different prints of the final design were pinned up for reference. You should talk, Wolf said to her genially. How's your cat tattoo doing? She grinned at him, still biting me, but not much lately. Chris heard the message in her words and stripped down without comment, down to his waist, and then he peeled his jeans back along his hips. I still like that rose on your shoulder, Wolf said admiringly as Chris prepared to get on the table. Thank you, Chris said. Rachel turned away to examine one of the drawings and Wolf picked up the stencil and started the transfer. When he was done, he nodded briskly as he stripped off his gloves. All right, take another long look. Make sure it's what you want. Obediently, Chris got up to use the mirrors. The design was huge, covering his ribs and the lower part of his chest. On his smoothly shaven skin, the transfer ink looked blurry, but the lines were right where they should be. Without the thin, dark hair that dusted his body, he looked pale. His eyebrows and, curly ha and the curly hair on his head seemed as dark as the transfer lines. He didn't touch the outline, but stretched and examined the way his new body looked, adorned only with scars and the years of self-discipline. You look so hot, Rachel said from behind him. In her heels, she was two inches taller than he was, exactly. He smiled at her in the mirror. You always thought so, he said. Imagine that. You want music? Wolf asked as he started to measure ink into a disposable cup. Chris shook his head and stretched out one more time before getting back on the table. Feel free to put on whatever you like to work to, he offered. Ha! You don't know what you just got yourself into, motherfucker, Wolf warned. He used a remote to turn on the stereo, and the sound of an older recording started coming from the speakers. Heartaches. Heartaches. My loving you meant only heartaches. Hmm. ZZ Top would have been the obvious guess. <laughs> Heavy metal or something tribal and trendy might have been a good follow-up. Patsy Cline, though. <laughs> yeah, Wolf said cheerfully, scratching his chest. I am a badass motherfucker. <laughs> Ready for the pain? Most people say this part's the worst. Hurt me now and get it over. Chris said quickly. He reached out a hand. Rachel sighed and took it as the needle gun descended. Later, Rachel pulled off the road before they got to the Holland Tunnel, and Chris looked at her in surprise. You don't get to go back yet, she said. Ah. On top of the cheap floral bedspread, she unbuttoned his shirt. The outlines were glistening under sheets of plastic bandaging, and she, and she started poking at them. Hey now, he warned her. You asshole, she said. He reached up and ran his hands into her mass of thick curly hair, pulling her down for a better kiss than the one in the car. 
She pressed against him and the outline of the tattoo flared with tiny pains and itches. Their bodies shifted and he turned them onto their sides, pushing his knee between her legs and she moaned. Yeah, that's it, she growled lightly, grinding her hips so that she crushed herself against his leg. Her brief leather skirt rode up and she ran one stockinged leg across his, abrading her inner thigh along the rougher texture of his jeans. He helped her, tugging the skirt up further around her waist. He ran his hand across her ass and made false disapproval sounds in her ear as, she, as he bit the lobe. I didn't realize you'd want to fuck afterwards, he said in a low voice, not stopping as he worked her panties down her ass cheeks. I, I didn't pack. She arched an eyebrow at him in amusement. Since when do you need anything but what you came with to fuck me silly? Pulling back just slightly, she reached one arm between them into her bra and pulled out a small tangle that unfolded into two black latex gloves. If Louvre is a problem, that's your fault. She bit him back on the lower lip, sharp enough to break the skin, and he grabbed her head again to force their mouths together so hard their teeth scraped. They laughed as they wrestled for position and clothing removal, and when he finally managed to sink his fingers through the tangle of her pubic hair, she stopped her faux struggle to work her hips and take more of him in. I guess you forgive me then, he said, twisting his hand to turn his curled fingers up against her G-spot. And I guess I have to spot stop there. <laughs>